This is NVIDIA Shield, and it's an Android-powered gaming device. But most importantly, it has PC streaming built right in. So with just a few button presses, we are jumping directly into Bioshock Infinite, this year's uh, big game from Irrational Games. Uh, and it's already available on Shield, just like that, after a few button presses. Directly in game, you can navigate using the gamepad. It essentially acts like the uh, Xbox 360 PC controller that you can dump into any PC, uh, and it shows up right here. So it's acting kind of like the Wii U's gamepad, where it uh, mirrors the content on your PC. Uh, we are running a Tiki PC with a GTX 760 GPU, but you can use a, a, a much lower GPU from NVIDIA. It has to be an NVIDIA GPU, um, but otherwise, it's very basic to set up, as you saw. It's, it's as simple as being on the same Wi-Fi network, and you can just jump right in and play the game on the Shield itself. So it's not quite as smooth as you see on the screen, but it's pretty close. And with a game like Bioshock Infinite, where it doesn't require as, uh, as Twitch reactions as, as so many other games do, you can absolutely play this and barely notice the, uh, the, the issues with lag. Um, so there's a guy right there. I'm able to take out these bad guys who are coming after me. So as you can see, there is a, uh, a bit of, of streaming lag. Not a tremendous amount though. And so for something like this, it works pretty okay. With something like Call of Duty Black Ops, however, it's not as good and we just got beat to death. Uh, so let's see what Call of Duty Black Ops 2 multiplayer looks like. It's loading in the background, so now that I know it's loading in the background, and if I want to do something else like, say, check my email, I can jump back into the home menu pretty quickly. Uh, I could jump into the New York Times app and see what's going on in the world right now. Uh, and then while I'm waiting, I can jump back into Steam and make sure that the game hasn't loaded in the background. You're going to encounter issues where the game is running in the background and you have no input because the stream has cut out because you're doing something else on the device. And uh, just, you're gonna have to be cognizant of that. Uh, again, as you can see here, it's direct mirror of what's on the, the, the screen, uh, the other screen that we're using. Um, but it's not as quick. It's, it's definitely, a, a, again, there's lag there and uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be a problem when dudes are shooting at me. I know there's gonna be some bad guys around here because I see that my friends got shot up and I'm already dead. Um, but this is a really Twitch-based game and that is, uh, this is illustrative of, of the fact that you really, you can't suffer any lag at all on, in a game like Call of Duty Black Ops 2 and it really affects the gameplay. As you see here, I'm casually lounging in my home office and I'm gonna try and see if I can get some, some video gaming going on. So I'm gonna jump right in to uh, the Steam beta. Uh, I'm on my home wireless network, which is incredibly strong, so it should help support this. Uh, I've encountered some artifacting here on the video feed and a little bit more lag, but it is totally playable and we are relatively far away from the PC that it's actually being played on. Um, so the game that I've been playing most here has been Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, which is a really good game and I didn't know that. Um, so let's just jump right into that and see if we can get some going. Let me update this story while I'm, while I'm waiting. Print. The ability to uh, comfortably jump into a full actual game on a handheld device from the comfort of pretty much anywhere in my relatively small Brooklyn apartment is pretty delightful. Uh, it, it means that uh, I can, you know, take a break from work for a few minutes from this important Apple ITV post to, uh, to you know, drive a Porsche uh, somewhere in uh, a virtual USA. And we're playing. So there is, uh, there is lag in this, but it's definitely less noticeable just because you're anticipating turns a little bit more, so it's not a huge deal uh, if, if the, the reactions on the controls aren't immediate. Uh, but it works really well. Sadly, there's going to be a, a long demonstration of the fact that I'm not that good at video games while I show you the shield today. Here I am, casually relaxing after a long day at the office and trying to watch an episode of The Daily Show. On the shield here, I'm going to open up Hulu Plus and jump right in. It opens up really quickly because this is a pretty quick device. As it turns out, The Daily Show is a show that I watch, and I'd like to watch the latest episode. And one of the, the kind of neat hidden functionalities of the, uh, the Shield is that I can use it as a, uh, a convenient little media device. So I'm just gonna set it down. I'm gonna adjust the screen a little bit, put it right there. And now I'm hands-free watching media on The Shield. Uh, thankfully, the hinge on the shield is really strong, so I'm able to 
tilt the screen so the viewing angle is best suited for where I'm sitting. And I'm sitting pretty far away from the shield right now, right? I'm about three-ish feet, two and a half to three feet. Um, and I could move it further away. The screen's really crisp uh, and it allows me to uh, comfortably, casually watch from where I am. And I've muted the sound, but as you'll see in a moment, you can easily turn it very loud and casually watch The Daily Show from last night on my shield. Here I am, casually sitting on the subway, using the shield for Android gaming, which is its other purpose. And it's in my bag, it's kind of puffing out my bag. It's taking up kind of a lot of space. Just for reference, there's also a Vita hidden in here. And it's about a third of the width of the shield. So it's not the most portable of consoles, but I am able to fit it into my bag. Uh, it's a little heavy, weighs about a pound and a half, so it's adding a lot of weight. Uh, and I open it up real quick, and I got a whole bunch of games here. Um, so right here, we uh, will jump into Grand Theft Auto real quick. It works really well. It plays really well, um, except for some some issues with regards to the virtual buttons that uh, were ported into the game for it uh, being accessible on mobile. But as you can see, it says tap to continue on the, the menu here. And all of this right here, uh, I am able to ac access this now using the gamepad and press that, but it shows a virtual mouse. It's really a, a kind of weird port job of the mobile version of Grand Theft Auto 3 Vice City. So I can move around, can run around. It looks pretty. I can hijack somebody's car, Grand Theft Auto. Uh, but you'll see if I try to drive with the either of the triggers, it just shows a kind of crazy view instead of acting as the gas and brake, which is kind of what you would expect from a mobile game on a gamepad, uh, Grand Theft Auto, no less. Uh, you press A to drive, actually, uh, and it's a little weird. That could be a measure more of it just being kind of an older game. But anyway, jumping out, jumping into another game, something like Vector, which is not uh, in a Tigra enhanced, it's not meant for the Shield, it's not in the Shield store, it's just an Android game, but you can download any of these games to your device. So if you jump into Vector, this whole game is uh, built for motion, uh, for touch-based gaming, so I have to actually touch the screen here to use it, which is a, a little uncomfortable with this whole gamepad down here. I can, it, it's, it's playable and you can hold the device like this, but it kind of is uncomfortable and unwieldy. If I was standing up, for instance, I wouldn't play this. Another popular Android game is Gunslugs. We've got that right here. Um, and this does allow for some gamepad game support, so I can select the main screen options and uh, actually jump into the game. And so I'm able to use the analog sticks to control the character to jump. I use X to shoot. But there's some weird inconsistencies, like pressing Y is the start button instead of the start button. If I actually press the start button, nothing happens. But if I press Y, I can use that. Uh, and then I can, I can navigate in here using the gamepad, or I can touch play. So this isn't really a mobile device, right? Uh, it's Wi-Fi only, it doesn't have a radio, so it makes it something that's not really sellable on the go. Also, the bulk factor is just another major part of that, right? It's, it's a big thing. It's not convenient or easy to fit anywhere. It's certainly not going to fit in your pocket unless you're Andre the Giant. Uh, and that's a, a major problem for selling the Shield as a portable. So that's NVIDIA Shield, a $300 portable Android gaming device that's really not a portable. It's very good for using as a peripheral for your PC at home. And if you've already got the GPU and the uh, assorted other accoutrement you'll need to make the PC streaming work, it's a great addition to your house. And certainly a good replacement for a smaller tablet.